we have signed <coughs> an MOU with strategic partners. One of the strategic partners we have signed MOU with because it's the Aberdeen Women's Center and um, we have signed uh, MOU with the National Emergency Medical Center who are in charge of all ambulances around the country. We have the opportunity to say we've also signed with lawyers, lawyers, uh, female lawyers in Sierra Leone who have been working tirelessly to, to defend um, um, rape victims and we see the need for us to be working with them and collaborate with them and bring them under this umbrella that uh, we will all work together for your agenda, sir. We have the opportunity also to say that we have signed with Don Bosco, Fanbul, Don Bosco, I mean, <coughs> Your Excellency, when I came from the Don Bosco Center, I, uh, I uh, reported to you that it is one of the most fantastic um, centers I have seen um, uh, within the sub-region that really look after our kids. And um, it's not just rape victims, but there's a whole lot of other children in different um, conditions that are there, and the Bosco are looking after them. So we've invited the Bosco here today to be with us. We've also invited the president of the lawyers to be here with us so that um, you know, we can uh, strengthen our commitment to this course that you have put together for us to do. And we have also signed an MOU with the Sierra Leone Female Medical um, Association. These are young doctors, female doctors who have come on board and they want to work with us and um, in all their previous, in all their, um, the hospitals where they are assigned they are now going to be working as even even if we have a one-stop center there, they are going to be helping in making sure when a victim is brought into those hospitals, they will be there to protect those victims and they will be there to not only protect them but also preserve the evidences that we need for us to be able to, to go to court. So we have the 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 the, 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 the uh, organization, the head of the organization also supposed to be here today and um, they will say something uh, just to emphasize their commitment to, to this cause. My office also had the opportunity to invite all the family support units heads around the country, the whole country. We had a meeting at the official mess at Kintong and it was a fruitful meeting and I believe that is a meeting that uh, actually changed the mindset of those people since that time. The, the, the pattern or uh, the way they are working has changed drastically. As you are aware, during the Hands of Ideal campaign, they were one of the people that I was actually targeting all throughout because of the kind of reports we were getting from individuals about the service they provide. But um, after our meeting, things are beginning to change. And I want to report to you that, Your Excellency, we had a three-day training a three-day training for all the doctors who are going to be providing these services to our girls um, in an event they become victims of, of rape. The, the three-day service was actually put together by the Rainbow Center, and the Rainbow Center championed these, these um, services where um, UN Aid came on board, and the Office of the First Lady and other partners came on board, UNFPA, they came on board to make sure we are able to do this three days um, training for everyone. Since we left here in July, we have been working um, um, collectively to put things together so that um, the, the uniform, the uniformity that you asked for, for us to work in collaboration with, with one another, we have tried to you know, to an extent, we have tried to understand one another and then see how we, wherever there is a missing link, who is supposed to fit into that missing link. But I want to um, uh, report to Your Excellency, since August to date, since the launching of the special court, we have had a tremendous success in our court cases and um, I believe the CJ and the AG are here, they will, they will brief you on that. But we have um, 62 conviction since August to, 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 to date, I mean, since after you launched the, 
the special court. So that is a, a huge success in our cases. But again, the little challenges that we have, we will also bring that to you. The Ministry of Health uh, working with um, UNFPA to put together the, um, what's, what's the word, uh, the, the, yeah, they're going to be training, they're not only, they're going to be training um, um, doctors also in government hospitals to train them so that they are also up to date with the way we want to deal with our, our kids when, when they are victims. And not just that, but there, there is a program that the UNFP has put together with the, and I think it's going to be launched soon. There is a program on... Yes, uh, um, there, there is a program not only on curriculum, yes. but there is one of, of also that is dealing with uh, um, course coordinators handbook. Yeah. That should spread not only for doctors, but for other healthcare uh, yeah. providers. Yes, so UNFP are working with um, the Ministry of Health on that. And I understand that in the next few weeks that will be launched. And that is what now they will cascade down to all health workers and social workers so that everybody know what is it that they're looking for or what they should be looking for and then um, how we, we, we move forward with that. With the judiciary, we have got a whole lot of hope and um, the AG and the CJ and the DPP have reported to us a lot of positive things that I believe they're here and uh, we'll give them the opportunity, sir, for them to to report to you officially because that's the task you said you want us to to go and come back and report to you directly what everyone is doing. So at this at this juncture, at this juncture, let me um, now ask the Sierra Leone police, um, who is going to speak on behalf of the Sierra Leone police, to please. We said five minutes, that's what we agreed at the meeting, to do a presentation on just the things that the Sierra Leone police have achieved and where we are now in the just few of the challenges. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Dr. Julius Madabio. Uh, Excellency, the First Lady, Mother of the Nation, Mrs. Fatima Bio. Uh, we are very much happy as a police that this is the very first time we have actually been giving such a support, not only actually on audience from uh, the highest level in supporting us in such an important um, area. We actually have been able to put in place, we have had, um, we have signed um, MOU with Don Bosco, as the uh, first lady said, with those other um, organizations that will be able to assist us. Because when we investigate and give these people um, request, medical request form, they actually have to have expert opinion which they will bring to us for us to be able to conclude our investigation. And we are pleased that we have been able to sign MOU with our leading women who are only, not only there to provide us with um, medical examination report, but they have assured us that they will be able to follow up in courts until um, they are able to give uh, testimonies for, for the conclusion of the matter. Um, we have been able to sign MOU with MEMS, as the uh, first lady said. Um, they are actually to assist us, pick uh, victims from uh, um, uh, areas to the one sub centers that the police actually will conduct the investigation. Um, we have actually been able equally to put in place uh, facilities that we uh, bring about um, profiling because we think when we profile this individual, we store them, and um, even after they are released, we'll be able to get the record published in our website, which uh, I must say. The uh, Inspector General, the Deputy Inspector General, have actually be able to put in place so that um, people will be warned against individuals that they should not really leave their uh, children close. Um, so, um, and we have equally assist, uh, uh, assigned a lawyer to provide legal uh, guidance in the investigation of um, the sexual uh, offenses matters to ensure that all technical issues are actually removed and by the time it gets to law officers department they will be able to within the quickest possible time profile opinions 
that actually will not uh, allow the people's uh, rights to be violated. So I must say that is really the reason why we have had a huge uh, conviction within this social justice period. Having said that, we are equally constrained. We are very much uh, pleased that uh, with the MEMS uh, MOU, they will be able to assist us to pick individuals from far away uh, areas to one-stop centers that will be able to conduct investigations. But we should equally realize that there are areas that are definitely not motorable, where vehicles cannot actually get there. And we really uh, want motorbikes that uh, will get there, not only to bring the victims, but to be able to assign officers that we obtain statements and we encourage uh, individuals that are witnesses to come forward um, to uh, give um, uh, the statements uh, um, and equally to support them in court. Um, that brings me to the other area of witness protection. Witness protection we are managing as Australian police was left behind as a legacy program, uh, 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 project by the special court because it was really as they told us responsible for the success they made. And so they left that for us to develop it. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, we have over time uh, in the past provided witness protection. And currently we have over six that we are providing uh, witness uh, protection for. And in fact, in some cases, we are about to link up with the law officers department that they give us witnesses who should not only be facilitated to the court to give testimonies, but their safety and security should also uh, be guaranteed. And even after the entire matter is concluded, we ensure that we scan their environment, whether it's appropriate for them to go there. Where it is not appropriate, we still retain them. Where even within the country, like uh, a private college lady, we send them out who was actually involved in the rape, uh, rape by um, the Minister of Education too. We, we are able to send her abroad with the understanding that each time she's visiting her, she has to link up with us. Um, but uh, for us to provide the safety and security, which we are still doing, we need resources and uh, we need a safe home. We have actually identified the location to be our academy where um, they will be there. It's much easier to provide safety and security. We'll be able to facilitate them to court and give testimonies and take them back until we are really sure that if their safety and security in their communities are guaranteed, they will take them back. Um, the other area is really profiling. The profiling, the SMP has been able, with the help of OSIWA, providing a substantial amount, first as a pilot project at CID, to profile individuals that actually have been charged to court. Uh, with the help of the OSIWA, that has been expanded to um, the provinces, the other regions, and uh, I'm pleased to say also that the uh, West Africa sub-region, with the support of the EU, um, they have been able to come up with um, a project that we will store database that we serve in the sub-regions, uh, which means when criminals escape here to the other regions, we'll be able to track them and bring them. And that facility, we also even, even want, uh, we want to extend that to even the ACC, because we have seen they make it out of court settlements, but those individuals are not profiled. And so if eventually they come to the police, we'll clear them are having not committed anything. So the training is part is going to take place week after next. But in the midst of all this, we have been able to establish in Freetown. We have now extended it to Puloko, Makini, Kenema, and Bo. We actually need um, all around the internet facility. Uh, Motema and um, Tankoro are going to benefit with the MOU we have signed with AFCOM that we have provided them as part of our land. So they are going to extend uh, this uh, facility to the two um, 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 police regions. But then the other areas still stand um, um, and constrain in that area. So that will be the other area actually who appeared as if we could benefit from um, the, uh, the fiber optic. That if East is extended in those areas, um, the ACC will equally uh, benefit, the immigration will benefit, as many as uh, passport types who have concluded investigation, we will extend to them to be able to read and monitor how it all went about. The ACC will actually be giving the facility for them to um, write those that they have been able to profile out of court settlement, and then we will store that, and when they come for profiling, we'll be able actually, sorry, for clearance, we'll be able to indicate that they have committed offense. Um, so, I'm very much pleased, His Excellency, for your intervention and uh, 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 emergency.
the FSU um, in that area would always have a latest stand to be tremendously. I must commend them to the intervention. They have been um, sensitization, which really is indicated in the reporting. Uh, we have actually, on our own end, have actually trained to around the country for them to be able to investigate completely. But then, if we are not able for sexual offenses and those other things to have database for them and the other regions, we know that free time is not serving So, His Excellency, Her Excellency, Mother of the Nation, we submit that um, you look into those areas of our constraints. My uh, humble submissions. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. May I now invite um, the president of the lawyers, please. of time for me to understand the existing protocols. My name is Fatman Tosori, I'm the president of Lawyers, and the acronym stands for Legal Access to Women Yearning for Equality Rights and Social Justice. I've been charged to speak with respect to witness protection and care, and I see the police have made a foundation on that. And I'd just like to speak on witness protection and care when matters go to court or when they have been referred to the office of the DBV for prosecution. Your Excellency, we're aware that for um, successful convictions, there needs to be cooperation from the victims and the witnesses. Um, we have seen a, a, a surge in the number of successful convictions, which we're happy about, but we're certain that we need to put more in place to get that number on the increase. One of the things we note, based on our experience and our dealings with the witnesses, is that most of them are worried about their safety and well-being. So many a time, they don't come to court because of that concern, especially because usually there's intimidation from the perpetrators, their family members, and members in the communities. So they find it hard to cooperate with the police to come to court and give testimony against people who they live with in their communities. We've seen people who have been ostracized from their communities because they've come forward to report cases. We've seen people who have been deprived of housing and shelter because they've been ostracized to come forward on these cases. We think that we need to give confidence to the witnesses, to the victims and the communities to come forward to report on these cases so that we'll have an increase, and a much more increased number of cases that come forward and also participation in the court process. And one of the things we've always been discussing with the Honorable Chief Justice is firstly thinking about the minute things that would make a difference, like distorting the identity of the witnesses and the victims, especially when it comes to child victims, because they have a life to live beyond the incidence of rape, and we want to make sure they recover from the incidence of rape. But because most of the time the identities are not preserved and protected, they are named and shamed within their communities and even in their schools. So we tend to see them dropping out of school, which is a disadvantage to our girls. We also think that it is important that for adult witnesses who come forward, that there's a camouflage. So much so that when they enter into the court precincts, they're not identified. Because many a time they come under attack from their communities and people, and they're named and shamed. Instead of the perpetrators being named and shamed, it is the people who help the justice system that are named and shamed to the table's turn. We also think it will be easy to get into a reverse distortion system where if you give testimony in court, I should not be able to identify you by your voice. That is doable, um, Your Excellency. Um, the voice distortion um, recorders can be acquired. I know um, financing might be a challenge, but it's something to look into. We also need to be able to remove some of these victims and witnesses from their homes. We need to provide them halfway housing and shelters, because sometimes when they go to court, they find it hard to go back to their homes. And they, if they're worried about their safety and security, they, if they're children, they run away. If they're also worried about their safety and security, it ends up be resulting in compromise and settlement. And that is an offense. But you never ever see people come to court on compromise and settlement because they know that once you get involved, you yourself are found wanting. You'll be found wanting. So most people don't come forward on compromise and settlement. 
we also we're aware of the uh, um, the right to fair trial because the right to fair trial sometimes require you to include his name, the witness's name, and their address. And I'm sure um, with time when we actually amend our laws, we would look into some of these things. Seems so far as making sure protecting the identity of the victim is of importance. We also have to look at the psychological trauma. Some of our witnesses and our victims are scared of just going to court. They're worried about entering the precincts of the court. And so we have to be able to train them, to prepare them. Um, luckily, we now have a prepping room that has been established within the court, but you have to actually enter into the courtroom before you start the, prep, the prepping session. So we would want a situation where there is enough and adequate time to prepare these witnesses so that when they come to court, they're not traumatized just by seeing the judge and seeing the lawyers who are always, almost always intimidating. Um, we also want to make sure there is a covert witness protection program, not just when they go to the police, but beyond. So if you come in and testify and you've been identified, whether we can possibly remove, these people can possibly be removed from their communities and placed into other communities so that they can start their lives and move on with whatever it is. We believe that this is the start of a collaboration and cooperation that would see a seamless um, process for all MDAs and all stakeholders that are involved in this process. And um, we would also, we, are, we, are, we know that this is, this is going to be an uphill task, but it is achievable, it is doable, and so it is it's laudable that there's been so much light shed on sexual and gender-based violence because the victims are primarily girls and their future has been hampered by the conduct of certain people who are known to be repeated offenders within our society. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have the Sudanese Medical Women Association, please? Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Your Excellency, the First Lady, Honorable Ministers of Government, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Frances Ramatu Sise, and I'm a part of the Kinghaman Maternal and Child Health Hospital, where I work as an obstetrician gynecologist. I am also the Vice President of the Sierra Leone Medical Women's Association, an organization which comprises of Sierra Leone female medical doctors within the country and in the diaspora. <laughs> As the number of SGBV cases increases in the country, we as an organization know that we have to play a role to play both in terms of networking to map out preventive pathways and also in the holistic management of the survivors. In our meeting with Her Excellency the First Lady about three weeks ago, members of SLAMWA expressed our desire to work with Her Excellency's office in formulating school peer mentorship programs as well as one means of preventing sexual violence. With schools targeted especially as the ages of the perpetrators continue to decrease. Also discussed in that meeting was that a subgroup of SLAMWA members with particular interest in the clinical management of SGBB survivors would be considered for capacity building through training with the ultimate goal to operate within best standards. I am proud to report that with the support of the First Lady's Office, UNAIDS and Rainbow, Dr. Olabisi Claudius Cole, who happens to be our association's president, was able to conduct a three-day training of 35 medical doctors, eight males, 27 females, stationed in various hospitals across the country. With this training, these medical practitioners will now be able to compassionately provide comprehensive clinical management to the survivors and also follow through with giving evidence in court. Your Excellency, we have also identified hospital coordinators um, in facilities without one-stop centers, as this will facilitate smooth collaboration between hospitals, increase accessibility, and ensure proper referral pathways when necessary. With these great gains made and even larger goals ahead, we as doctors need reliable and sustainable partners with government being at the top of the list. Firstly, 
It should be ensured that the services provided by the one-stop centers be wholly integrated into already functioning hospital services. They cannot work in isolation. Secondly, the sustainability of supply chains for post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP for HIV prevention, emergency contraceptive pills for prevention of unwanted pregnancy, and antibiotics for the prevention and treatment of STIs, as, or, as well as other medical consumables, must be guaranteed. Lastly, Your Excellency, Rainbow and Slamwa, Sierra Leone Medical Women's Association, are appealing for further funding to ensure that other medical officers, especially those in district or facilities without a rainbow center or a one-stop center, can also benefit from this comprehensive training, ensuring that survivors nationwide are guaranteed optimal care. Your Excellency, Madam First Lady, as daughters, sisters, wives, and mothers, the Sierra Leone Medical Women's Association registers its appreciation to both of you um, for leading this fight. It is our hope that more of our brothers, fathers, sons will follow your lead in making Sierra Leone a safe place for women of all ages. I thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, your Excellency, I know um, UNFPA and Save the Children, these two organizations have been working with the Office of the First Lady since the inception of the Hands of Hurricane campaign and they still continue to work with the Office of the First Lady. So at this point, I know um, Dr. Kim is here from UNFPA, who is at the moment working with both Ministry of Gender and then the Ministry of Health on a few other things that I believe is of great interest to our project in making this place safe for all our kids. Dr. Kim, please. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of Sierra Leone, Madam First Lady, um, Honorable Ministers, uh, friends, colleagues, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, as UNFPA, we've been supporting holistically this uh, fight. We've been working very well with the Ministry of Gender, um, on the hotline that has been set up. We've also supported the ministry on the setting up of safe homes. I'm sure she can talk about that. We've also been supporting the Ministry of Health and Sanitation to develop the uh, curriculum, a standardized curriculum, which is comprehensive. So uh, we, uh, this curriculum has been finalized, and that is what will be used for national training from henceforth. We've also developed standard guidelines. These are the clinical guidelines uh, that will be used by uh, the medical practitioners who care for the women and girls. We also developed uh, what we call a, a treatment pack. So we put together all the drugs and medications that were needed uh, by the uh, victims who went to the centers. So that when you go there, you're not now looking for antibiotics, you're not now looking for this, but there's a standard pack that we have. When you go there, you receive that. I must say at this juncture, though, that that pack did not include the uh, HIV drugs and medications. So at this uh, time, I would like to appeal that HIV drugs and medications are included in the pack as well as the test. So UNFPA put it together so that at least the centers could continue to function for the first few months, but it's something that we hope that government will take forward uh, from henceforth. We are also looking at how we can support the establishment of a forensic laboratory in this country. So these are just a few things that we have been doing, and I thank you very much for this opportunity to speak about them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. Your Excellency, I'm laughing because it's like two years I'm behind Dr. Kim to give us a, a lab. Now that she's talking about it, since yesterday I've been jumping up and down, saying you're not leaving this country without our lab. So we're looking forward to that. Again, like I said, I've been working with UNFPA and uh, Save the Children. At this juncture, I want to 
can they just um, um, get, um, I don't know if I'm seeing Heda or I'm not too. Really. <laughs> so, you know, we've been working on different things which um, she will present here. And we take, we'll, take, we'll take it from there. Great, thank you very much. Uh, your Excellencies, this is a great pleasure for us to be here. And just to say that I've been in many countries, but this is the first time I've really seen the drive and been so excited um, by the battle against SGBV as I have in Sierra Leone. So uh, Save the Children is, is extremely excited to be a part of this. Um, just very quickly, um, we believe that uh, really the fight against SGBV begins as children. So it's both having respect for each other, it's having safety in schools. We've been working with the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education to work on a safer school initiative and work on the policy to make sure that when children are being educated, they're also safe. Um, one of our big um, exciting achievements that happened unfortunately during COVID, so the launch was done online, was a, <coughs> sorry, a sexual and gender-based violent app. So that even young people, I mean older people like me, we, we like things on paper, but the youth are all on their phone. And even in Freetown, this is still one of the best ways to reach uh, children and youth. So this teaches them real information about their sexual health and SGBV. So um, we're really hopeful that in this way that we can have the youth of Sierra Leone learn how to respect their own bodies, learn how to respect others, and really kind of spread, spread a good message from very young age on up. Thank you, Heather. Um, um, at this juncture, may I ask uh, Don Bosco Fambo to present uh, what they are willing to offer us? Your Excellency, President Maladio, Your Excellency, First Lady of Sierra Leone, first of all, to express our appreciation for your work. Personally, I have said this to, to you both. Uh, for the great effort that Sierra Leone is uh, making in order to fight uh, SGB. No? And, uh, and also to appreciate uh, the work of the police and the judiciary. We are really uh, appreciative, but also to express our thanks for all what is being done. Second, uh, to tell you that our experience since uh, COVID-19 has appeared in the world and here in Sierra Leone, we have realized that the number of cases of uh, violence against children and sexual abuse is on the increase. And we have to open our eyes and we have sincerely to do something. I have to confess that uh, I have been 26 years in Africa and I have worked in Nigeria, Liberia, Ghana, and uh, for the past four years here in Sierra Leone. And I've never seen so many cases of sexual abuse and violence against children like in Sierra Leone. And I think that the new therapy center that we, are, we have created in the peninsula uh, aims exactly to face this big challenge that Sierra Leone has. First of all, I think that the main challenge for all of us is to work more in prevention. It's what we are trying to do. And thank you for inviting us to be part of this task force. And prevention implies to work also with the families and with the parents and to try to see deeply what are the roots of all this uh, violence against children. I think that our culture here in Sierra Leone and in Africa is male-centered, is adult-centered, and this contributes greatly to, to this phenomenon. And that is why we are creating also in the new Don Bosco Fambul a therapy lab to help traumatized children to overcome their deep traumas. You come to Don Bosco, you will see children laughing, playing, but deep, deep, there are deep, deep uh, wounds and traum traumas that we have to, to help to heal. And uh, also we are going to build a research center because we have so much information, statistical data, we would like to start to work more deeply in a scientific uh, way to know why all this violence uh, against children is ongoing. We need a scientific research in order to find the correct interventions, the correct strategies to solve this challenge 
we need to understand what is going on, where are the roots of this violence. And that is why we are creating, we are building and creating a research center to deal with all issues that have to do with the violence against children. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Let's not lose go from Your Excellency, at this juncture now, uh, we'll now turn to um, the institutions that are government institutions, uh, ministries, to also give us their own take on this. So as what we are discussing here is on the gender and children's affairs. May I invite the Minister of Gender and Children's Affairs, please? His Excellency, um, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Madam First Lady, um, let me take this opportunity to apologize for not attending the pre-meeting. Um, I had an emergency, my cousin passed away, and it's just not any cousin, it's a cousin that I lived with, so I had to go. Um, apologies for that. Um, at the ministry, our focus is on implementing the Sexual Offences Amendment Act and what has been prescribed by the Act as a responsibility of government. And so in doing that, we are utilizing innovative ideas to bring that to light. Um, in terms of the hotline, which we launched, as was declared by His Excellency, it's a child protection line across the world and the reason why it is used it is because the cases that we have in Sierra Leone are children. 97% from the calls that are coming in are children and not adults. And one of the reasons why it is separate from an emergency line is because not all of them require an ambulance. Because of the investigation that needs to be done, turning up with an ambulance might cause a problem might even put the people's lives at risk. So because of that, it is a separate sort of line across, you know, sort of um, every country. Um, this sort of increase, um, you, you, you look at it and you're thinking, what's actually happening? The other day, Liberia has also declared a state of emergency, 50% rise. The UK has 16% rise also declared, you know, that it's the sexual violence has increased by 16%. One doesn't know, you know, sort of what the issues are. So a study also is going to be conducted by us next year to find out what the root causes are. But in the interim, what we are also looking at is prevention. And prevention is basically the key because by the time the act has happened, regardless of whatever action you take, you've got to deal with the child living with that situation. So like, uh, you know, sort of the partner from Save the Children um, uh, mentioned, we're working with UNFPA and the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary School to look at the sexuality uh, um, curriculum. So that's been introduced so that kids could learn from as early as four years of age what the signs are, what's improper. So that's been put in, into, into, into practice. Integrating the uh, um, one-stop centers with the hospital, that is the plan. That is really where we want to go. Um, we're not getting separate medicines, we're not doing anything separately. At the end of the day, it needs to be integrated into the hospital, into the hospital system so that it is uh, um, incorporated in, into the practices. Um, I put together a team um, um, that includes Dr. Kim, Dr. Isa myself, to look at the forensic lab. 
and the proposal has been put together and once that proposal is reviewed and it is finalized, we have a donor that is um, on standby, that is not UNFPA, uh, <laughs> um, but perhaps UNFPA can come in because there's a lot to do within the bracket. And what we also uh, um, sort of plan to do is to hand it over to the Ministry of Health and Sanitation to implement because it's outside of our sort of our expertise. It is more on a, on a clinical, so we would be passing it over to um, my senior colleague. Safe homes, um, safe homes across the country. We have safe homes across the country. What we have implemented is a, um, a sort of a new model that we're testing, which is actually foster parenting. Rather than renting, since we don't have sort of huge funds, rather than renting homes across the country, we have identified foster families. And those foster families we have gone into agreements with. We have provided them with some support and they are taking in uh, um, a mother and child in these situations. That's working well across the country. Also, another key thing that we have also put in, in place, and we've put this in place um, with a forward thinking of decentralization. Because eventually, what will happen is that uh, um, the one-stop centers will be controlled by councils. We will be passing that over so that councils can have oversight of them. Because they are on the ground, they will be strengthened with the skills so that they can make decisions because it's so far removed and they have uh, um, sort of a, a, a better understanding and control being at the district. So we've set up district steering committees. Um, the district steering committees bring together all key stakeholders, the council, the uh, um, chiefs, the mummy queens, the, the youth leaders, the hospital, everybody together and it's mirroring something like um, MDSR um, for the medical people that are here. It's uh, mirroring MDSR, which is a maternal death review. So you look at each case and you find solutions, local solutions, to ensure that that doesn't happen again. What that's doing and what we're seeing is greater ownership. Greater ownership at district level, that they're taking control and um, they're making decisions and we're seeing that are more proactive measures by council as well as by other you know, key players. Um, Madam First Lady, I think I'll stop here for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, before I go to the next, the next person to give um, their own report, I also want to bring your attention, Your Excellency. Um, the minister was talking about the 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 the, the, line, the call lines that we need to use for in terms of emergencies and when these kids um, I'm not an expert in this field so I wasn't able in our meeting to decide on which number they should use and uh, which number they should whatever it is so I gave the chairmanship position to the CJ for him to call a meeting so that the people who deal with the ambulances, then the, the child line, the 116, 112, and uh, was it 117? Because there was another 117, yeah? So you have 112, 116, 117, and three something. 323. Three. So all of these lines are out there. So um, in that meeting, we were not able to have an agreement. So I asked the CJ to actually call the people involved so that they can sit and let us have some kind of an understanding as to how we will use these numbers. Unfortunately, the Minister of Gender didn't go to that meeting. I, I was meant to understand. So there was no decision made at that meeting. Now yesterday, again, since she was not at our meeting, we decided that um, we we're going to present it to her that we were willing to use the 116 depending if 
she can now collaborate with the other numbers. Is that what we agree? Yeah? yeah? If she can also collaborate with the other numbers, because since she was in both of the meetings, for us to take a decision, we can't take a decision on her behalf. So at this juncture, may I ask the CJ to give his own report, please? Excellency, we please you. With your leave, could I sit down? Thank you. This is a report on the need to maintain one emergency line linked up with other emergency lines for effective and immediate response to sexual violence cases in Sierra Leone. Um, in so far as sexual um, offenses are concerned, um, you have Reporting, investigation, prosecution, and adjudication. On the reporting aspect, definitely you need the emergency lines. They are so important. There are four emergency lines which we know of. Um, we know about the 117, which I believe has been fused to the 112, but you have 116 and 323. The national emergency line is um, 112. It is a line by which you can have ambulance quickly to the scene of crime or to fetch the victim to one-stop center, rainbow centers, or FSC. With this line, there is immediate response to ambulance services, which is crucial to the handling of sexual violence cases. The child protection emergency line, as she said, is the 116 hotline. It is not only in Sierra Leone, it is world over as a child protection line. Um, it has been adopted by the World Stop Centers. It has a major defect in that the Ministry of Gender Affairs has not linked this line, this 116 line, with the 112 line, which is the National Emergency Line or other lines, um, by which you could secure ambulance services or the bomb Bosco Fambu line. Without coordination with the 112 National Emergency Line, as is currently the case, it becomes ineffective. The Don Bosco Emergency Line is, of course, the 323 line. It is too used as an emergency line by which you can secure help for the victim of sexual violence cases. The problem is a problem of synchronization and for linking up the emergency line 116 with the other emergency lines 112 and 323. Our recommendation is that emergency line 116, which is the worldwide child protection line, become the line for sexual assault cases, but only and only if it is upgraded by the Ministry of Gender Affairs to link up and be unified with the other emergency line which provide ambulance services. So we have the action points now which we should try to carry out, implement. We have that the gender ministry make it a point of duty to upgrade the 116 Lafort line by linking it and unifying it with the other emergency lines, that is 112 and 323 lines, so that immediate response and ambulance service is provided when sexual crimes are reported. That when the linking up and unifying of the line, say, 116 with 112 and 323 lines, or any other line for that matter is done, the line should be populated together with the services people are to get from these, on that particular line. As it is, we need to do that. Because the 116 line, she's trying to justify it, but then it will get better result if it is linked up. So one call, even if it's to 116, the other emergency lines would have been put on notice and they could take action. So there should be that coordination between the 116 and the other lines. That is what we are recommending, rather than each just being 116 line without coordination from the others. They say vice versa, there are People who make mistakes, they may report to 112. For 112, 
will be in a position to link up, say, to 116. But the main line will be 116, and that should be populated, meaning that people should know that that's the line, and that that line it is linked up with other lines, so that they use it effectively, and we get effective results. Thank you, Maya. Thank you very much, sir. So, um, again, in our meeting yesterday, um, um, we had to make a decision because we we're coming over here today. What, was it yesterday or day before? Yeah, day yesterday. before yesterday, sorry. So we agreed that we, was, we will use the 116 since um, she wasn't available. Let us use the 116 because we just want progress. We want this thing to move um, faster. And then in that light, um, if she is able to connect all of these others, or they work into uh, collaboration where they synchronize it. When they call 116, if um, as long as it's something to do with um, uh, sexual abuse, if they need an ambulance at that point, 116 will notify 112 and give them the address. Now 112, because they are connected to all the hospitals and we have ambulances all around the country, when they pick this victim, they know exactly which hospital to take them straight. And they would have made that arrangement even before they pick the victim. The hospital will be ready for them to bring the victim. So that was the, the, the reason why. And in a situation where the, the victim is looking for a safe home at this point, if they call 116, like a victim feels like they're threatened in their community, then we know 116 will call Don Bosco quick and then Don Bosco will make their services available to protect that child from their community. And that's the only reason why we feel like it is important that these lines, they interconnect with one another. Um, at this juncture, I know also that um, everything that we are talking about is basically the welfare of children. So in that regard, the Minister of Welfare also has her own the things that she has put in place, because we're talk we're really talking about the welfare of children in this. Thank you very much, His Excellency Sir, Madam First Lady, Colleagues, Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good afternoon. The Ministry of Social Welfare is actually charged with the responsibility of protecting our people, especially the vulnerable ones. So we have looked at some of the problems that actually lead to violence against our children, our women and our girls in particular. Therefore, we have looked at the alternative and child welfare policy that was developed in year 2014 and we are we have looked at that reviewed still reviewing to scale that up to an act we are working on that together with the Antony general and the internal affairs minister we want to really be aware of all of these safe homes because when we call them safe homes or welfare institutions I think the Ministry of Social Welfare is also mandated to provide psychosocial counseling in particular and just ensuring that the children are safe or whoever is there is safe. At the moment I know we have quite a few that were around. And before the ministry was divided, we had two government uh, welfare institutions. One really is being uh, run by Hannah Bokari in Bo, and it's very good because to me, Hannah had started to one stop centers even before we got the funding from the Chinese for the pilot one-stop center. There was another one in Makeli that was built by government, but 
because I, uh, there was a time I discussed that in cabinet and I was advised that safe homes are better run by private people for continuity. So we also handed that over to Hukana Bokari and she's doing very well in Makini. And the ministry is looking at, or we have asked HRMO to establish two new directorates. One directorate is, we are going to call that the directorate of family and child welfare. Fosco Fambu just said in his presentation, prevention includes to work with the children and the families. And in this directorate, we'll be working directly with families because we have, when we talk about family, it's mother, father, and child. So we've asked to get that uh, directorate established in the Ministry of Social Welfare. That was why when, after the division, we did uh, kind of ask that some of the staff from the children's directorate stay so that when we employ new staff, they will have to learn from the old ones. And that uh, was granted. We were giving two of the staff back. The other directorate is going to be the directorate of mental health and psychosocial support. Mental health and psychosocial support, because at the moment we all know that social welfare is leading on the psychosocial aspect of the uh, NACOVAC. And I'm made to understand that in the next two to three months, all of these pillars are going to go under the, the, the uh, relevant MDAs. So we want to have a uh, uh, directorate ready for that. Although without the directorate, we still have social workers who do psychosocial counseling to returning migrants and children in, 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 in trouble or in conflict of the law, with the law. And in our meeting yesterday, sir, uh, we had a suggestion that together with the Antony General, we look at sending some of our children that are sent to approved school or remand homes to Don Bosco Fambo instead. Because Don Bosco, Don Bosco Fambo has structures in place for these children to continue in uh, uh, whatever training they are, they are doing, particularly going to school. But that we'll look at together with the relevant uh, MDAs. And we are also working on a parenting strategy with UNICEF. And once that parenting strategy is completed, we'll have to launch that and take that around the country because some, some the parents really need to know how, what is involved in keeping your, your child safe. We have also attached two social workers on the request of the CG, the CJ to the special court. And I was very happy yesterday to report in that meeting that we've also been given the go-ahead to employ 236 social workers. Because we need the social workers in all of the facilities that are going to be dealing with uh, victims of, of gender-based violence. And under the passive project that is in, under the Ministry of Social Welfare, we are also going to train 200 social workers. And with the help of UNICEF, we are working on the uh, social work strategy, and they are also going to help us to inform more than 80 social workers, but I'll report on that once that uh, materializes. Uh, we have developed and launched uh, an action plan against human trafficking. And that plan is will be in existence from 2021 to 2023 with the help of IOM. Because if we know that if we control some of these trafficking issues, especially those that come in the form of men picking, internal trafficking, we will we'll, we'll, we'll cut down on some of these offenses. So we are, we have developed and launched that action plan. 
and we have trained community elders in identifying and preventing some of these actions and even in educating some of these parents about the, 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 the other side of what they do, sending their children away with strangers or even with their brothers and their sisters or relatives, bring them to Freetown. They end up on the streets of Freetown selling. We, uh, we have been trying to uh, let them be the gatekeepers in their communities to educate these people to say, before you take your child or give your child to any family member, please, this and this and this is what we want to put in place. And we want to ensure that we know where this child is going and from time to time we check on this child to avoid such problems. Okay, they are telling me five minutes. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much. But like I said, welfare issues are social issues that are everywhere. So the Minister of Social Welfare is very happy to have all of you here and we'll be knocking on your doors and we are ready to work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I saved the best for last because this is where we are celebrating our achievements since we launched this special court. Even though we have other issues um, uh, that um, the DPP is going to be talking about here. But Your Excellency, in our meeting yesterday, I want to also report to you that uh, the increase on violence on women in Sierra Leone is um, actually becoming very alarming. And these are not just women in poor homes or women in the villages or prominent homes. And there's a whole lot of serious issues happening now. And the, the lawyers brought that to my table and they are asking that we look into this issue also because it's now becoming very alarming. And the other thing that we, we had concern about Your Excellency is the fact that we have young kids in prison for petty crimes, small, small crimes, which um, the CJ is smiling. <laughs> We're begging that, that they look into those matters because we have young kids in prisons and um, they've not been to court, they are just in prison. If we can look into those issues also, please, that is also something that they brought to our table. And I thought, report, I shall report to you accordingly. So at this juncture, may I invite the DPP to tell His Excellency our achievements and uh, our expectations also. Thank you. Thank you, Mother First Lady. Your Excellency, the President of the Council and the First Lady, the Chief Minister, Mother Minister is present. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to start by saying after the President's proclamation in 2019 to date, that is 14th of October, we have secured 152 conditions. I need to indicate that. And that after the establishment of the special Court, I will speak. We have secured 64. That is, if prior up to our meeting, it was 62. On the same day of our meeting, two more came in. So I give you the update to 64. And then we are happy how we are moving. And uh, since it, we are talking about gender based violence offenses that it includes not only sexual offenses sexual penetration going towards sexual penetration you're talking really about ch children in this case so it also includes the rape and rape of course we're talking about people above 18 and above so we need to be able to capture that and we're also talking about insects because their parents interfere with their children and then the meeting a child for sexual offenses, because these are all anticipated in the in the act, and then how boring. So the figure we have given you is all inclusive. 
but I mean, to break it down for um, for the between I mean March 2019 to July 2020, we had 84 convictions. But that's the total I'm giving you, and then 64. So when you add both, you get 152. Let me also state here that uh, since that pronouncement, it seems to us, that's our observation, that prior to your pronouncement in, March, in February 2019, there was a culture of silence. And so we did not, we're not expect, we're not seeing much reporting. But immediately that pronouncement was made that we were going to be in a life imprisonment. The police will attest to that. Complaints were not coming in of even incidents that may have taken place of five, six years back. And so you see that that's how the number swells up. So many are not just new happenings. The police will attest to that, that fact. And secondly, and this is why it's, it's a social problem. I'm happy the two ministers are here. We have observed that in most of these cases, they are between the perpetrators and the victims are children. Yeah. Between the ages of 5 to 17. As I speak now, I have one 12 years who has abused two um, female children. So the fear is, Mr. President, if something is not done, and this act is so draconian, that even a child can be convicted, sent to, sent to the um, approved school, or when he is of 18, he goes to start the rest of his sentence. If something is not done socially, we're going to have a lost generation. I need to indicate that as prosecutor. Because my role is to prosecute. But I also have to look at the social circumstances in each of these cases. Because can I really charge a five-year-old child? Can I charge a seven-year-old child? These are the concerns and are part of our constraints and even as we go forward. So I need to bring that uh, to our attention. Now, coming to our constraints as prosecutors. Your Excellency, sir, I want at this time to say we are grateful to your government that recently you have allowed us to recruit additional 34 state council. There are 34, and I am told by my AG you, that my AG should always have 20. We are looking at a population of 7 million. And uh, just from the time you made up proclamation, we have received 470 cases which are now, we are now in the court. And uh, prior to, to this recruitment, I have only 19 lawyers nationwide. As I speak, we have one lawyer for the whole of Southern Province. And we know how many districts are there. I don't need to name the districts, Your Excellency. We have one lawyer in the north, and we know the number of districts. And then two for um, Kenima and Kaila. So the other district that has a state council is Kono. So that is, is a constraint on us. Because what has now happened with the emergence of uh, the sexual offenses, the attention that has been paid to it by the state. We are worried that uh, if we don't have more state council, there's a tendency to ignore the other cases, which are also very serious. Murder cases are there, and other cases. So we need, really need to. And I, I'm not speaking for the judiciary, but even though once you increase, we need more judges in each of these districts. That's the best way we can go if we want to tackle this problem. The other problem, Mr. President, I know it has been said around the table, but we think it's an urgent need. 
and that is the forensic lab. It's a very urgent need because we are losing some of the cases because of evidence. Because by the time the report is made to the police, they, 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 they take the time, go come tomorrow for your medical form. By the time it gets to those persons that are really supposed to examine the victim, the evidence is lost. I think the doctors are here, they will agree with me on that. So the sooner we have a forensic lab, so now a report is made, immediately that child is taken for examination. Because everything is fresh. When we went to, to Atiga, the population of about 120,000, am I right? Yes. They, they have that kind of system. Immediately the offense is committed, the, one, the, one, the, the, the line hotline is there, the police will, will go pick up the victim straight to the center, the victim is examined by a medical doctor sitting there waiting, and the police is there to start the investigation. So that forensic lab, my, Mr. President, to me is, is a kind of urgent need. Because it helps us in our investigation. Especially when it comes to matters of rape. Right? We need it so urgently. So with asking our partners, I'm happy that uh, people have said, oh, we'll do it for you. Again, the other problem we have been facing, and that, that is the question of, I know that the police lawyers talking about witness security or protection. Our problem we are facing, the police will agree with me, is tracing of witnesses. Tracing of witnesses. Because most times, even when I talk about tracing of witnesses, I'm not talking, only talking about, about the witnesses to come and testify who knew what happened, but even victims. Even victims, and of course, accused persons, once the police grant their bail, which was the case before now, they, they just go to thin air. But now, again, we are constrained. I know the police is also constrained now. Because some investigation might take some time. The law, if they are saying the right beyond 30, 30, uh, uh, 72 hours, you can charge, somebody can come to the court for habeas corpus application, or economic, economic crimes is 10 days. Now you keep them there longer than the, than the time that somebody's going to raise hair. You release them on bail, they go into thin air. So that is really a problem. Because the human rights people are there. I don't know, we have gone beyond the human rights the, the period. So my Lord, may um, so it's my Lord, I have been used to that now for several years. Mr. Like President, uh, that is a serious concern. And the last point, I will say this with some degree of gratefulness to the government. Because when I came, this has been, it was one of those activities I wanted to undertake. And that is witness management. Most of our people are poor, living in the rural areas. Even in the western area, for instance, there are people that live in some distances who are witnesses how you get them to come. They will say, I do not have money. And so that has been a serious concern. But what I said with gratefulness is the fact that uh, now government, in, our, in the last budget, where it gave us, it gave us a token which we have now started with. And I'm pleased to say yesterday, we had a situation, we have four witnesses to come from Moyamba Junction. We had one of your police officers, and I was, was almost chopped off, you know what, about that case. And they said to us, we do not have money, including even the doctor. So I said to them, you can come. They all came yesterday, all four of them were led in, in evidence. So meaning that, the prostitution almost had closed its case yesterday. And then they came now to, to, to me, we have to go back. Right? We have to pay their way back. Meaning that if, if this government pays much attention to this funding on witness management, because if we do not get the witnesses to come, we cannot proceed. That is just the fact. But once we, we encourage them, then they can come. The last point is, Madam Foster, you raised something in our last meeting. And this is the right 
forum for us to look at and examine. Because we are thinking about ethical issues. There was a request of naming and shaming. Now, we, after that meeting, I got one of my state council to give me some record. And I have it here. You can see this record captures accused persons who have been under the SP, who have been sentenced. Their names are there. Every information is there on them. But the point question is, that's what you wanted. Can we how can we be able to post this? It's an ethical issue. Someone asking this question. Because you, that came up in our last meeting. We want to name and shape. And maybe I will share this with you. We may all have to think about it. Whether we can have a website. Because whether we can have a website where once there is a conviction and sentence, we get a, we get a picture of the particulars of that accused person posted on that website. It's an ethical issue. So I thought, I don't just want to because I could recall here in this country, my learned friend and colleague, the ACC commissioner, took some teachers and present at the country tree. And people came with a lot of ethical argument. So I thought I could bring this. If, we, if you get a bill, we go ahead, Mr. President, we all agree. You can create a website so that once there's a conviction or sentence, it is posted there so we know who are the people destroying the future of our children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Um, with that question, my opinion. Treat rape as a serious matter they have a, a, a register where you put rapists. Their faces, their name and addresses are on that register so that whoever need to move to those communities, they need to know, I mean, who these persons are. So, but that is not uh, my decision. That's the decision for the government to make. But it's a, it's a practice around the world where you have um, sex offenders register. When you have a sex offenders register, it's not just a book. You put their faces there, and people need to know who they are, because it's the crime they commit is not a it's not it's not a, a, a hidden crime, it's a heinous crime. So, but um, thank you so very much. Um, before I ask the Minister of Health to just give us a final summary of everything here, may I take the opportunity again to thank you all for. I mean, adhering to this call, and this is a call by His Excellency the President, and I pray and hope that we will continue to work in collaboration, because it is only in collaboration that we will succeed in this mission. No one person can do anything about this. My voice is not loud enough, your voice is not loud enough, but together, when we put ourselves together and uh, work for this, it will be a brilliant and we will have a whole lot of achievements. And I'm hoping that the next time we come here um, in front of His Excellency, we will be um, uh, telling him about more success stories, not just conviction, but how we as institutions and as individuals, how we are working in the collaboration, because the collaborative side is what we need now, like yesterday. So, Honorable, um, Alpha Wari, um, it's your turn, please, sir. Um, your Excellency, sir, after your proclamation about sexual and gender based violence, uh, the nation owes it to her, her Excellency, the First Lady, of coordinating um, the actions that have taken place so far. May I say, sir, I would like to start off by saying trauma has to be looked at indeed. Sierra Leone have gone through 10 years of civil war. 
people that were 10 years old in 1991 are young adults now. Um, Sierra Leone has gone through the, the Ebola effect as well, and we are now going through corona and, and, and issues. What is the effect of that on our population? We have not studied yet. What is the effect of that on mental health in the country? We have not studied yet. I was therefore most, most happy to hear John Bosco talk about Della Pilar and eventually doing a scientific research to find out what is going on. But the fact of the matter is sexual abuse among children or within children is very, very high in the, in the country. It has been said that apart from children, we now have an increase of physical abuse for women. We now have an increase of, of abuse in um, areas where we expect law compliance to be high in the barracks. But what has also come out is that we are talking about children not only being perpetrators, they are the victims as well. How do we handle these issues? It is said here that indeed, indeed prevention should be a mode. What I see here is a major advocacy, something similar to the, the extent and depth of the hands of our girls. A major advocacy to, 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 to train people, to talk to people. We have the advantage of having 2.6 million in our schools. If, if we can go through that, this will cascade again into their families. And we have that chance. This country has something like a high percentage of people uh, um, um, that are in their teens. And therefore, we have an opportunity to be able to capture those so this would not continue at all. May I say that it is most commendable for the first lady to have met the various entities, names, Abadino women, and the others. And issues have, to have been raised. The police is talking about profiling of puppy rates. I want that heightened as one thing that we could go to. The, the president of the lawyers is talking that people are intimidated even in their own communities. They may not be able to come up and say what has occurred. And hence, uh, the lawyers and the DPP are talking about witness management. In witness management, we're talking about resources for transportation, some form of food, voice dis distortion, provision of safe homes. And the safe homes, we now have a different um, um, form of it. Whilst you can be able to rent some houses as safe homes, you can also use foster care. That has come up. All of this we, we have said, indeed, internationally, we'll continue to use 11116. But the gap there is that we should be able to use our, our NATCOM and our telephone companies to see how they can synchronize with the 112 for us to have ambulance service if at any one time it is required. Madam Dr. Uri um, heightened that in the one stops that they have got training for, for 35 people already. And, uh, but these are mainly the doctors. And um, Dr. Kim highlighted that we do now have standardized core curriculum, standardized gui gui guidelines and treatment packs. I just want you to feel rest assured that the guidelines, the, cur the curriculum are with, with, with us now. This should not only train the doctors, but the nurses, the CHOs, the social workers, the police, the FSU. So the modules are from 1 to 8, you will be dealing with mainly social workers, uh, 9 to 13, the other apps. But this is now available with us. The treatment pack has a gap. And that is what the Ministry of Health should look Your Excellency is aware when, when your daughter gives you instructions, uh, it is time for you to pack your bag and, and leave politics. Yeah? So indeed, mother, we will work on the treatment packs and try and put in HIV tests and HIV drugs within those packs. Uh, um, we mentioned the safe homes. May I say here that the DPP have expanded a lot of things that, that have happened. Not only rape, but incest. <laughs> incest is something now we have to really deal with. But to end, I would say the forensic lab. The forensic lab, I'm lucky to be with where it is done. And I can say 
um, and it is worked on for it to be for for there to be improved admissibility of genetic evidence, and it is worked on for mainly to get the equipment and we'll work towards what the basis we have got on this corona now, the use of molecular PCR lab. So if you use that as as, as the base, we can expand that and add on electrophoretic um, equipment. So, this is a doable issue. It is achievable, it is do doable. With the training, with the infrastructure, we're talking about $1.5 million. As a country, it is doable. And if you add on issues that have, have, have been raised, safe homes, eh? um, um, identity uh, um, protection, voice distortion, a 2 million, 2.5 million package we can do as a nation. I want, I want to end up by saying, sir, you have heightened this, and this is a major menace now in Sarajevo. And we can be able to improve the number of people that we come, we come, we convict. We have uh, in, in, increased the number of councillors, the state councils, not councillors, state councils, and, and, and with the forensic lab, in association with, with that, this country can be in a position to do it. I thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, so before I hand over to His Excellency the President, I want to personally personally thank the Sierra Leone Police, the Rainbow Center, of course the, the CJ's office and the AG's office. Your Excellency, all of these partners, um, with the exception of um, Save the Children and the UNFPA, all of these partners that are here today are really coordinated by um, Dr. Olavisi Cole. Um, I don't know whether she's here. Um, Dr. Olavisi Cole and uh, Mr. Keto, they basically identify all of these partners that we need into this fight and um, we reach out to them, the Don Bosco family, the, the, um, the lawyers, the doctors, all of them, you know, it, it was them that so really, um, it's not all me. It's, um, they, they, also, they also put so much emphasis and they've been working tirelessly. Dr. Ola Bissigol trained the doctors for three days, um, that workshop, and I also want to commend them for their hard work. Thank you so very much, sir. This is the summary of what we have for you today. And I hope you may be impressed. So, thank you. <laughs> Madam First Lady, Chief Minister, Ministers, the Lord Chief Justice, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I want to start by thanking all of you for the job that you started. It's an extremely difficult job, but I wanted a coalition, and I think I have one at the moment. How well this will work depends on how you all view the task ahead of us all. I want to thank the First Lady for providing leadership and personal commitment to this fight beyond just being a duty. And I want to thank all of you variously for the things you have done to, to improve and also help the potential of our curse. The fight it's a tough one, but I think we should be up to the task if we decide to fight together. This is about our own children. And for me, as we prepare the grounds for prosecution and case management at different stages, I want us to pay more attention to the preventive aspect. If we can, let's prevent it so we don't have a case to go to court or to go to the hospital. This means that we have to heighten our program as far as parenting is concerned. 
I think we have been careless as parents. As a society, we are no longer, um, we don't cherish the values we cherished before. Every child was a community child. I could smack a girl or a boy anywhere if I see him or her doing anything that is not socially acceptable, like my own son or daughter. But because of um, human rights issues and a lot of changes that are taking place in our society, we frown on this and are afraid maybe to do it. So the preventive aspect, I want us to put our heads together to really create a program to prevent this from happening. I want to thank you all for taking action to prosecute, especially the judiciary. I want to thank you all for providing psychosocial and uh, clinical support for these uh, victims. But I want us to pay attention to the preventive aspect. The scale at which this is happening in this country is unacceptable. And the age bracket in which this is happening, both being the victims and perpetrators, is just unacceptable. Little boys who, who have no business thinking about things about what they are doing. What are we doing as parents? I think it is our fault. Before we blame these kids and put them, you know, lock them up in prisons, let's do proper introspection. And I support the view um, suggested by Don Bosco that we should take a scientific look at this problem with a scientific lens. Do some research. What is happening? What has gone wrong? Because if we are going to be able to tailor and target our interventions, then we have to use the scientific lens to really identify the root cause or causes of all of this sort of uh, social uh, 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 menace that we have. So we need this coalition, and I need this coalition to work together in unison if we should succeed. And I'm happy uh, when I learned from the first lady that uh, the, 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 the female lawyers have joined and the, um, uh, the medical, the female uh, doctors have also joined. For me, that is success because no one, the police cannot do it, the social welfare, the gender cannot do it. No one group or person can do this. Um, it is a societal menace and we should. So we need more people. We need to enlarge this group by making sure that we cascade most of our activities to local authorities, take them to the schools where most of the, the teachers we should maybe think about sex education. And um, as somebody was making reference to what is a bad touch and a good touch, if there's a good touch, you know, let children be aware of all of this as early as possible. So it is going to take us, um, we, we are going to need to design different programs targeted and tailored and that is where the research is very important because we should be able to identify where the, the, the exactly where these problems are emanating from. So I want to encourage cooperation, coordination, and uh, the spirit of oneness in this group. I'm particularly happy that we are getting more people to come in and uh, we, from their own niche, they can provide the sort of support that we need to succeed. I, I'm happy that with um, um, our tech guys, they should be able to resolve the issue of the numbers, um, how we can use one number and get onto all the other services that are available, all the other numbers that we are going to that are going to be silent for now, and um, we should try to resolve that as quickly as possible. I think technologically it can be resolved. And uh, we should not be wrangling or bickering over that why people are suffering or we are not able to provide the services for them. Since the proclamation, quite a lot of other countries have joined. Um, the 
the structure of places have become quite common and um, gender-based violence has become predominantly uh, an issue. I think even just for COVID, it's become quite rampant around the world. But we are concerned with our own problem. Let's do what we can. Uh, if there are other methods to adopt, if they are to look at, um, our local chiefs, you know, um, whatever we can do, we cannot afford to make vulnerable uh, the women folk of this country. They should not be afraid to come out, they should not be afraid to contribute. And um, I'm particularly happy that the girls at the secondary school, no, primary school going to uh, secondary school, vindicated the uh, when I said that we should give equal chance to the girls. For three years in a row, they've been at the top of the list. Which means we should give them a chance. We should not destroy them in, the, in, those, in those very uh, formative uh, years. I just uh, launched a school in Potloko. I think we should transform these beautiful worlds into action by really going out and providing support to the girls. I visited Polova and they told me 80% of the secondary school girls had children. I said this is unacceptable. We have, we have it's a pandemic by itself. Going around the world, people are just quiet about it. That is the uh, unfortunate aspect of it. Now the reporting is because people know, and the more we can provide witness um, uh, uh, protection and support for them, a lot, of, a lot more will come out. There are a lot of these matters in, you know, in the, the, in, in the uh, darkness. People are still afraid to come out. But I think we should be proud as a group and as a coalition that we are catering for the future of our country. More than 50% of our country are women. Why should we really fight for them? Why should we um, shy away from tackling these issues? So I, again, want to challenge the women for to come out uh, in support of these things. Uh, the men, where we need to shame them less let them know they are not doing the best things. Let's fall on them. They may need to rise up. Um, and we should not allow, uh, allow our little boys to grow up. Where are they copying these things? Um, videos, movies. That's why I, the, I think um, the, the uh, suggestion by um, uh, Club Bosco we should really take seriously. Let's not go, let's not jump blindly at this. Let's really identify and put our finger on where the root cause is coming from. That way we'll be success, successful. Um, there, there are various requirements. We need to put our money where our mouth is. Um, I can see uh, different requests. And like uh, Dr. Uri said, we can, we, we are poor, yes, but I think we can do it. Um, we have shown enough commitment. Good stock should be followed by full, good action. And good action need resources. So I think um, Sierra Indians are very good to, to do a budget. So I will ask this group, don't be over ambitious. <laughs> Um, we, we have a good case. I think um, if we have um, a budget, you know, especially speaking to some of the critical issues you've highlighted, um, um, uh, a forensic lab is one thing that we, we need. We cannot fight this fight without that weapon. Um, the other issues by the DPP, and uh, some other concerns that we are raised that need resource. Let's have a, a budget uh, with those lines, you know, and then we will see what we can do, where to take it. 
we help in that by other around the world. And a lot of people are following our footsteps. So uh, we should show commitment by putting our resources, mm -hmm. you know, actually supporting and protecting mm -hmm. our uh, women folk. So I want to thank all of you, Madam First Lady, for providing leadership, for your personal commitment to fighting for women. And I encourage all the women in this country, not just uh, the medical doctors, the lawyers, you know, everybody. I think this is a good fight. It is for the future of this country and for more than. It is a democratic fight because it's for more than half of the population votes. So I think we have a moral justification for fighting for, for them. Thank you all and I hope and pray that uh, this, the, the, the spirit that has brought all of you together to want to contribute will keep you together so that we can achieve this together. Thank you.